Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Kevin from Death From Above Wargaming and today I'm going to be doing a little tutorial video on my painting techniques for mech miniatures for classic battle tech. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to share some techniques and some tips that you can learn from. Otherwise we'll just have good fun watching me paint up some mechs. All right, so the unit I'm going to be painting for today are my Redstone Rangers. They're a house regiment for the Tarian Concordat and perhaps Corita wannabes. Uh, they have a primary color of a blood red with black accents and sometimes some silver or brass metallic accents. And the unit I selected is the Locust out of the Armored Combat box set. Friendly target identified. So the first thing I like to do before painting any miniatures is prime them. And I use a spray primer by Army Painter. Uh, it's just a matte black surface primer. Um, you get a really thin coat and it's really good adhesion layer for your subsequent painting. And it also has a nice job of filling in cracks and crevices where you kind of want shadows to appear. Another option, if you're using brighter colors on your miniature, sometimes use this uh, fine gray uh, surface primer sub primer by Tamira. Um, you could also use the base color that you're going to paint your mech, but I like it simple. I use black for all my mechs. And shake up your paint, give it a quick test squirt to the side to get some of that dry paint out. And then just start lightly spraying every angle of the mech, hitting it with just a few seconds from about a foot to a foot and a half away. Um, make sure you get under the arms and legs and hard to hit areas. Um, otherwise, just don't spray on a humid day and make sure you're in a well ventilated, ventilated space. You gotta show off to the neighbors that you are a Battletech player and you need business. All right, on to the paint studio. So I'm gonna be using almost exclusively the game color line from Vallejo Paints, which I really like for miniatures because they have just a great consistency out of the bottle and don't require watering down other than to keep your brush wet or to keep the palette wet as time moves on, but otherwise have a great consistency and layering capability for miniatures uh, that works well for beginners and intermediate painters. So now that I'm primed, ready to go, I'm going to be applying this gunmetal color metallic paint. The reason I'm starting with metallic is because I like to have the actuators and sort of the hidden joints and some of the underplates have that raw metallic color. And since most of them are sort of nestled in like an armpit or under a leg, um, I don't want to have to mess up a base coat later. So all these little hidden areas I get first with my metallic paints. I'm also using this sort of throwaway round brush just because metallic paints can be aggressive on your brushes and anytime I'm using metallics I sort of use my low quality brushes or ones that I don't mind roughing up a bit um, as opposed to my finer brushes which I'll use for all like the other base colors. And I can get pretty sloppy here too and it's not a big deal. This is the part where honestly mistakes aren't that big of a deal and I just want to make sure that I'm hitting all the right parts with metallic paint. And if I'm getting it on other areas, it's not a big deal. At this point, I don't need to be extremely precise as long as the paint is going on thin and without any major brush strokes or globs. Um, those mistakes will be able to be corrected later and I'll have to do it anyway as I apply layers of the base color. Um, so don't be afraid to make any mistakes as you're moving along in these first couple coats because they can uh, be forgiven and you really just kind of want to map out like what colors you're going to have on this miniature and I sort of do that organically as the time goes on and as I start to develop the colors and I'm going to take a break from talking for a little bit and just let the music ride out until we hit the next section where I'll join you again there'll be a few of these breaks as we hit tail ends for each respective section so please feel free to fast forward or continue watching
So now that I'm getting into the base coats, I'm going to start with my blood red game color paint and start on the first layer. Um, again, being a little sloppy with this one, just trying to get maximum coverage uh, as long as they're thin coats and spread out well. Um, you're going to notice that you can still see some of the primer underneath, the red in particular, and some of the other more warmer colors. Um, don't go on with the first coat as um, opaquely. Um, you can see through them a little bit to the undercoats, so they will require two and sometimes three coats. In my case, I usually do three coats of red, um, starting with this first one, which is pretty broad, covering all of the parts um, of the armor that I expect to see red. And then once I'm satisfied that I've completed the red first coat, I'll move on to black, which is my secondary color and accent for the arms I had planned ahead of time, but it's not always the arms, depending on the mech or the style of the chassis. I'll, I'll do different parts or different accents, um, but with the black, much easier to get a first coat. I really won't have to do multiple coats on the black, uh, except for at the end, just some finishing touches. So. Feel free to hang in there as I put on my first coats, and I'll join you again when I start the second coat.
All right, so I gave that first coat a chance to dry for a few minutes, and now I'm kicking off my second coat of paint, starting with the red. This is pretty much the same as the first coat in that I'm broadly covering all the areas that I already have red and just giving them another thin cover of another layer of red. And I'm gonna do this rather quickly try to stay within the lines but it's not as super critical again at this stage because i will be doing my touch-ups and fixes later um, so just thin coats work your way around try to remember hitting all the areas you should be able to tell where you haven't hit because you would see still that primer underneath and at this phase as you get that second coat on you'll start to notice just very little presence of that black primer underneath um, which will go away in some of our later detail rounds, but this round, um, just getting that deeper color added with the red. So my second coat has had a chance to dry, and now I'm moving on with my detail work and fixing mistakes. So I basically take the same colors I've already worked with to do my base coats and my finest brush, and I start correcting all the little areas where I accidentally overshot with my brush and hit the wrong paint in an area, and I need to correct those mistakes. I start doing that now, as well as hitting any finer details um, that I notice with barrels and actuators and smaller areas that still require a little detail touch up or a specific color change that makes it pop out better or that I just think looks better. I start doing all that work now before I get into some of the more advanced stuff like shading and windshields.
All right, and now that the details and corrections are completed, I have all the base colors kind of where I want them. I start on my shadows and highlights. And with shadows, my technique is simply using a wash. And a wash is essentially a watered down paint that's going to pull in cracks and crevice areas and sort of form natural shadows where you might expect them to appear. And you could also water down paints, uh, like said, to achieve that same effect, but the wash has the advantage of consistency. So every time I go back to the wash or every time I'm painting a new miniature, I have that same consistency level. So these game color uh, washes by Bavaleo are a nice addition to your paint set. The other thing is I'm using almost exclusively black. I used to try to match up wash colors with the underlying base color, um, but I just never really got the, the pop on detail and shadow that I wanted. So I, I use black across the board pretty much, and I get a really nice effect with it. And the technique is really just loading up your brush with the wash and liberally applying it across the model, making sure to hit all the cracks and crevices when possible. But sometimes just brushing across a surface area does the trick and the consistency of it will naturally pull and find those hollows um, where they exist. Although occasionally when I do notice that I'm muddying up a particular surface area where I do want the sun to hit and I do expect there to be highlights, I give it a quick rub with my finger to get some of that wash off and, and it stays in the cracks and gets off the surface area. It works kind of well, despite getting your fingers a little dirty. So I continue this until I get full coverage on the model and then I'll be moving on to highlights. So now my shadows are complete, the washes have had a chance to dry, and I'm moving on to highlights. And with highlights, I have a pretty common approach where you're taking a flat brush, I'm using a very small amount of paint at sometimes dry brushing, and just trying to hit all of the sharp angles and corners where you'd expect a glare to get um, picked up on um, an object, or large surface areas that I expect to be directly under the sun. And the flat brush helps catching those corners and sharp edges or flat surface areas without actually getting down into the cracks and crevices or detail areas where you previously applied a wash or a shadow. And with at least the red and black, I'm really just applying the original base color. I don't attempt to uh, achieve an unnatural highlight using a lighter tone. Um, I generally only do that with some of the metallics where with gunmetal, I use a silver paint, which is a much more uh, bright and lighted metallic color that has the same tone but is much shinier <laughs> and uh, helps bring out some of the metal detail on on the edges and, and top surfaces but otherwise the red and the black already have sort of a satin finish that picks up highlights from the room lighting and I'm just dry brushing or using a very small amount of flat brushing uh, with those original base colors and I get a pretty good highlight um, through this method.
All right, shadows and highlights are completed and the model is more or less finished from a base paint perspective. And now I'm doing some true detail work at the end here, the windshields, which I saved for last, as well as any other things like logos or decals that need to go onto the Mac. But with windshields, my technique I'm gonna share is, I use a steel gray game color paint, which is more or less like a Space Wolves blue. It's a blue gray color. And I apply the smallest amount to the center of each of the window panes, which have already been base colored black. And I'm gonna lightly blend that outward. And the goal here is to have a center of the window remain that steel gray and that, that blue gray color. And then the edges retain that black color. So you get like a nice gradient going from the center outward and sometimes I have to reapply a little black into the corners. Sometimes I have to reapply some of the blue to the center just to preserve that um, full color of black or blue in the center of corners respectively. And then again, try to make that gradient occur uh, in the transition area. And then once I'm satisfied with that, I take one little point of white paint on some of the panes, usually like a top facing paint or a sun a facing pane and I'll just apply like a single point somewhere off center uh, to just show like an artificial window glare. And that's pretty much it. It's a lot of fine brush work, but achieves a nice little windshield effect. And then once I'm satisfied with all that and if there's any other decals that I wanna go on, last but not least is finishing up the base. So the cleaning up the base is basically, I'm just using a straight black paint to just restore the black base and I don't really do any scenery on the base like grass or rocks. I like it to just sort of appear like a shadow that'll go into any environment or map that we're playing on. And I just use a flat black. So I take black paint and use the flat brush to get it um, restored to the original look. And that's pretty much it. I appreciate everybody joining me today for my painting tutorial or just sort of sharing the, my method of painting with you. And uh, the locust is now complete. Let me uh, show it off a little bit here for you. And I appreciate everybody joining. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And please join us for more content, tutorials, and battle reps coming your way in the near future. Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. <laughs>